Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of History Quest. I'm Brian, this is my co-host Bailey, and this month we're going to take a trip out to the McLeod County Fair and talk a little bit about McLeod County Fair history. The first county fair in Hutchinson was held in a tent in 1873. Here meetings were held and exhibits made for two years, after which the annual fair was held in a larger tent in a different location for a year or two. As interest and attendance increased, a location affording more room was sought and was found east of where the Chicago, Milwaukee and St. Paul Depot later stood. Here, a still larger tent was erected and a racetrack laid out, a temporary fence built on two sides and watchmen employed to guard the unprotected portions of the track. Admission tickets good for one entrance cost 25 cents. A 50 cent ticket was good for the whole day and children under 12 were admitted for 10 cents. The exhibits were divided into these classes fine arts, flowers, pantry stores, etc. Running and trotting races were also held. During the years of rural schools, roughly the first half of the 20th century, a popular feature of the fair was the school display. With consolidation of the schools, those displays gave way to exhibits from the major school districts in the county. Then, in the late 1960s and early 70s, the school exhibit building became the Art Education Building. On January 23rd of 1899, it was voted that President H. H. Penoyer investigate the building of an additional amphitheater and also a dining hall on the grounds. In 1905, members voted to build a secretary's office at the cost of $150. Sam G. Anderson Jr. was elected president in 1911 and it was suggested that an auto parade be held on the last day of the fair and prizes given for the best decorated cars. H. A. Jennings was awarded a contract for a fine arts building. Receipts of the 1911 fair neared the $5,000 mark, and all officers were re-elected. Directors voted to sign a contract with the Curtis Company for an aeroplane flight at the fair at a cost of $900. In 1924, plans for a new horse and hog barn were submitted at an estimated total cost of $5,000. In 1925, the board voted to issue $10,000 in bonds to finance new grounds and building areas. New plans in 1929 including installation of a loudspeaker system by Evan Dennis and a new ticket booth at the entrance of the new road. More buildings were erected on the grounds during the 1930s under the WPA. The old octagonal horticulture building was done away with and replaced by a structure and a 4-H building was constructed. In 1940, the administration building was constructed by the Andrew Larson Construction Company. The picture of steady growth continued for the fair over the years well into the 1970s and 80s. A children's barnyard was added as well as a number of high action spectator events such as tractor pulls, demolition derbies, and even stunt shows. The 1980s saw a major hurdle to overcome for the fairgrounds when a June tornado ripped through the Hutchinson area and destroyed five buildings on the site of the fairgrounds. An officer in the administration building recalled being huddled under his desk during the twister. He recalled the first thing he heard was a tremendous downpour of rain and an awful rumble. He dove under his desk and the room began coming down around him. When he crawled out, the front door was gone and all he could see was blue sky around him. The twister was devastating. More than 25 homes in the area were damaged and a number of people were injured. With the fair not far away, it was in danger of being canceled for the first time ever. A motion was made, however, to repair and replace all buildings and hold the fair as scheduled. As the 80s turned into the 90s, the county fair was in store for a big change. The 3M company began looking for a place to build a new plant. On September 1st, 1991, sale of the fairgrounds to the 3M company were finalized and the fairgrounds moved to the southwest area of Hutchinson where it remains today. Charge you 25 cents extra for the butter. 1915. McLeod County Fair, non notice the dress and the sunshades and the, the old bandstand there. Uh, uh, there's the fearless loop to loop. Uh, uh, I'll tell you more about that later. Quite a crowd there. Uh, it, look at all those cars. Now there's the merry-go-round with the, with the uh, floppy top on it in case of rain. Look at all the sunshades and uh, a, a goodly number of people. It's there, uh, fair, of course, is still as still very popular. Uh, there, is the, uh, there is the dirt track 
and this is uh, these scenes are taken from obviously from the infield. This is the old, the old band, uh, the old uh, grandstand, uh, replaced by the present uh, cement one. But this was an old wooden structure, and uh, uh, that's where they viewed all the action. I believe we're going to see some some action and some free attractions. Here they are, the free attractions. Uh, <laughs> You'll see some unicyclists there. There's a Chesley Hill in the background. Uh, uh, people now call it the Pendergast Hill. My father uh, owned it for years. The original owner were the Chesleys. And their home was burnt by the Indians in 1862 up on that hill. Uh, we called it the beauty spot. My mother wanted to build there but never did. Now, now people have built up there. Unicyclists putting on their little act and there's a horse coming down the track warming up for the trotting and pacing um, races that we'll see more of later. Uh, Billy goats and uh, monkeys uh, <laughs> doing their thing. Another horse coming down the track and, and Billy goats rolling a, rolling a barrel. The, uh, uh, I believe we'll see the, the uh, fearless, fearless loop to loop, a very short uh, presentation of that is uh, here it is right now now you'll have to look awfully quick because it's uh, uh, it gets over in just a minute there are two cars man and wife man in one car wife in the other they go shooting down the track do a loop to loop and and one car goes now watch here they go and, and now it's all over there's the man and his wife and they put that on with a big ballyhoo about uh, uh, the f original film had a much longer shot of that but it's been edited evidently it's kind of too bad uh, because that is uh, worth watching uh, now we're back at the uh, uh, tricks on the bicycles now the stock parade I don't I'm not sure this of course is led by the by the Hutchinson band who played and still play at the uh, at the fairgrounds now after the judging and when the judges decided who got the blue ribbon and the purple and the red and the white, then they would, uh, the proud owners uh, would show off their stock, uh, led by the horses here. There'll be a fractious, there's that colt. Uh, he really acts up, kicks up his, <laughs> kicks up his heels back here. But they, uh, they led the, uh, all the uh, stock past the um, uh, viewers, and the, there's that colt acting up, uh, uh, past the people in the grandstand. Uh, another view of the, um, Chesley Hill in the background. Uh, perhaps we'll have a chance later to discuss the uh, original black family in town, the Wormleys, a lovely family that lived over here, uh, uh, lived right next adjacent to that uh, to that Chesley property. Used to work with Reuben Ed Rolrick, proprietor from Bisky, uh, and Don is still farming in that area, the same land, um, I do believe. Now we'll see more uh, exhibits. I believe they are in the Fine Arts Building, uh, showing um, uh, some of the uh, women's um, um, crochet work and and uh, millinery and uh, flower display. There's uh, uh, displays of uh, of uh, flowers, often judged by um, by Emma Lake, uh, and she is still judging flowers. She is still very much alive. My mother used to enter flowers down here in uh, uh, fondant. Uh, candies. Uh, we'll also see the results of uh, gardening and and farming operations. The apples and uh, trays of potatoes and and uh, here they are. And the bunting. I believe that <laughs> looks the same. I don't know if it's the same bunting, but uh, uh, today as it did then. And and these. Uh, well, there are two different ones. Some of these uh, were in 1915, and some were later. Now here's the. They're off. Uh, Harry uh, Harry Faulkner, his brother Don Faulkner, and old Alec Faulkner, their uh, their father was very interested in uh, horses and and cattle too. But the the Faulkners were official starters and judges here at the McLeod County Fair and elsewhere. Elsewhere, Donnie is very much still alive and can tell you all about it. Now we're at the races and they're off in the motorcycle race. There are three races rounding the first turn. And uh, the, just the, the, the three finished the race all right with each succeeding turn. This one guy is having a little trouble and he's falling farther and farther behind. 
there's the end of the race and now we're going to see uh, uh, some excitement these are old model t's fixed up by harlow crusoe and uh, you'll see them tip back up and away they go the guy in the knickers he'll get his later but this is car polo no protection on these gentlemen uh, there's one to drive the car and one with a mallet to hit the ball and uh, they crash and fall over uh, you watch quite a spill here and as I say no protection this guy got a little hurt his back is hurt you see him holding his back here now watch very closely you're going to see a man rolling down the tr uh, oh no 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 I'm ahead of myself We're, we have to see that big ball come out and then we'll see the the forerunner of the demolition derby just push those model T's and away they go uh, when they get done batting that little ball around, they're going to bring out the big one, and you'll see this. what happens to this uh, official here, the man in the knickers and the flag. Now they got the big ball, much too b big to see him. He got hit and, and knocked down with that great big ball. They sure had fun with that. Now watch. You see that man rolling down the track? That's the result of this head-on collision. As I say, head-on collision between these two automobiles, 1910 vintage uh, Model T's, it looks like to me. In today's demolition derby, they're forced to back into each other. Now, here we are back at the fairgrounds, but in the background is, uh, you see those trees. Uh, they are on top of what we always referred to as the Chesley Hill, now known as the Pendergast Hill. My father did indeed own it for uh, 35 years or so. But it was owned originally by one of the original settlers here in Hutchinson, the Chesleys, the Thomas Chesleys. They built a home there, and uh, that home, I used to play in the, in the uh, declivity, the hole in the ground that was the the basement of their home which was indeed burned by the Indians in the Sioux uprising led by Little Crow in 1862. Little Crow statue you may recall is is down by the mill dam. This is my first year in the area so mm -hmm. this is kind of my first uh, you know like impression of the fair and I gotta say it was pretty fun mm -hmm. yeah I mean it was just a, the whole atmosphere you know it was it, it was definitely fair time um, we, we did our dunk tank this year but that was a lot of fun that was the actually yeah it was that was a hoot and holler let me tell you what <laughs> but uh, yeah it was a lot of fun we had uh, we had a lot of people from the county were actually there for the tank um, we had the mayor of Stewart we had the mayor of Hutchinson mm -hmm. um, Deanna, the, uh, one of the DJs from KARP, uh, Fire Chief from Hutch, um, County Sheriff Scott Riemann, uh, Dan Hatton, the local police officer here in town. You had princesses from had, Winstead, yeah. Lester Prairie, and Hutchinson. Right, yeah. It's a good crowd. It <laughs> and we even had Liz Marcus from HCBN in there. Yeah, I think she's a little bit of a dunk tank junkie. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure she is because she had a lot of fun in there. But she was great in getting people. They were all great in getting people out there. Mm -hmm. but it was just nice to see that uh, for the historical society to have such a yeah. you know, community wide, and by that I mean county wide. You know, and they all volunteered their yeah, time volunteer. to get dunked. They all volunteered <laughs> their time to get dunked. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a great time. It was, you know, especially the uh, the uh, Hutch ambassadors and and water carnival people. I mean, they were just all about the dunk tank it was oh, yeah. yeah it was so much fun and you know I, if this history stuff doesn't work out i can always get a job at a carnival you know i, you, I feel like i'm trained now. it carny. was it was so fun you know standing out there holding balls in my hand and you know like who can throw a ball who can't and who heckling wants to people dunk and, a cop who yeah, wants to dunk yep, a princess it was great. but you know the great thing was we had our banner out there in mcleod county historical society and uh People walked by, they saw the banner, and a lot of those people had never been to the museum, never given money or anything like that to the museum. And so this was their first impression, and their first impression was fun. You know, mm -hmm. So now when they think McLeod County Historical Society, they think dunk tank. They probably think we have a dunk tank right in the museum that they can oh. go sit in. And if we did, I know exactly who'd be there every day. <laughs> have a historic it's a historical artifact maybe yeah, there you go, maybe. maybe not the one we used no but no we could like find a wooden one, one. yeah yeah a wooden dunk tank don't get any splinters when you fall in folks <laughs> but uh yeah but the fairgrounds is a lot of fun to walk through yeah, i spent some yeah, time on saturday just kind of 
giving myself a tour and it was a lot, there was a lot to see. I love the tractor pull. I grew up in the Twin Cities and never heard of a tractor pull until I moved to the Macau County area. And it's a lot of fun watching five-year-olds try to get as far as they can. I grew up in Stearns County, tractor pulls were, you know, down Main Street every day. Were kids like practicing with their with their dads or parents or moms? No, no. I'm <laughs> just kidding. They didn't in Painesville they don't do tractor pulls down James Street. No. No, no. no. But right. boy, you could imagine if they did. Mm-hmm. But seeing all the plants and the mm -hmm. homegrown vegetables and fruit and going to the art building, seeing quilts and drawings and paintings and and needle points, seeing all the the great levels of creativity that mm -hmm. were on display mm -hmm. and just people watching. Yeah, oh yeah. Watching. That's the best part of any fair. Just make sure your sunglasses are, you know, <laughs> are, are mirrored so people can't tell that you're watching or they're going to start mm -hmm. thinking. But yeah. Just people who live in the area. It's not just McLeod County folk. Mm -hmm. It's this everyone who everyone who lives within a half hour was at the fair. Oh yeah, there were a lot of people from Litchfield at the fair. There was another person from Paynesville, if you remember that. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That was kind of that was kind of crazy. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. How about, why don't you tell us a little bit about what the uh, partnership did in the uh, indoor exhibitor? Oh, well, inside the commercial building, the partners all shared a booth. So the County Museum started it on Wednesday and Thursday, and then Thursday night, they packed up their stuff so that on Friday, the Glencove Historic Preservation Society got to move in and they displayed their collection. They got to showcase some of the history they've been collecting for a walking tour, and it was a lot of fun for them. And then on Saturday, Historic Hutchinson did the same thing. They got to promote their cemetery tour that, ha that they do every year in September and showcase their artifacts and t-shirts and brochures. And then finally on Sunday was the Stewart Area Historical Society, the newly reformed Stewart Area Historical Society, and they had they had stuff for sale, and they had pieces from the Red Owl and from the Stewart Area, the local businesses on display, and they got to meet people and talk about their goals for the future, and it was awesome, mm -hmm. showcasing all the different local groups. And I think you know, for uh, for nonprofits like us, that's the uh, that's. That's the key is, you know, places like the fair or, mm -hmm. or expos or, you mm -hmm. know, any kind of show. Anything that you can get your name out there to let people know that yeah. you're, you're there. Because you never know who's going to have a connection mm -hmm. to these groups. You don't have to be living in Glencoe to have some kind of connection. Your kids could go to school there or your grandparents grew up there. And same with Stewart. Maybe they, maybe they went to McLeod West and still have memories of that campus. Or like me, you could watch God's Country and feel like just akin to everybody in Glencoe. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Good movie, by the way. Throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go to the fair? Yeah, let's do that. Here we are at the McLeod County Fairgrounds. There's no one here yet. We beat the rush. There's no food trucks. There's no carnival rides. It is just, it's a ghost town, but it'll be fun to see what this place transforms into. We're in front of the new pavilion. As you might remember, this, this is new because the old one had to be replaced. It was going to fall down eventually. So unfortunately they took it down, but it was the last remnant of the old fairgrounds. But they built it in the same style as the wooden pavilion, which I think is really cool. They're still honoring that history, trying to represent something that was really unique about these fairgrounds. Thanks for watching another episode of History Quest. Join us next month. We're going to travel over to Lake Marion and we're going to talk about the devil at the ballroom at Lake Marion. It should be a great episode. So thanks again. We'll see you all next month.